Hello everyone, and welcome once again to the TLO uh, RPGX training course. Once again, this is uh, Jensen, current chairman of the TLO Council and Academy D. In this section of the course, we're going to talk about the engineering and security divisions aboard a starship. Um, let's first start with engineering. Uh, let's go ahead and change our class to engineer. We'll go ahead and change our name to reflect the post of CE. And we will set a rank between Lieutenant Junior Grade and Lieutenant Commander. Let's call it Lieutenant Commander just for today. And then type in model Colhane main gold. Say tab so that everyone's models refresh. And voila, we're all set to go. So let's grab our toolkit and head on down to main engineering. Main Engineering, of course, is the hub of the Engineering Department aboard a starship. Uh, main Engineering contains the Warp Core, which provides the energy for the ship. The Warp Core has matter and antimatter that feeds into a dilithium chamber, which produces a matter-antimatter reaction of great power, which in turn provides um, the energy for the ship and for the warp nacelles and you can see the, uh, the plasma manifolds on either side. Alright, now that we're in engineering, let's basically talk about the role of the engineering department. Um, the engineering department is tasked with the responsibility of uh, keeping the ship operational. Um, that includes routine repairs, such as recalibrating, um, say, an uh, ODN line. ODN stands for Optical Data Network. Um, that stand, uh, an optical data network is sort of the like fiber optic cables of uh, Star Trek. You also have the EPS grid, uh, EPS standing for electroplasma um, system. Um, sorry, I paused because I've also heard it as electroplasma distribution network, but EPS, electroplasma system. Uh, anyway, which is basically like the, um, the power lines of the starship, which are the conduits by which um, power is distributed to the lesser subsystems. Um, engineering is also responsible uh, for running diagnostics on systems regularly to make sure that there are no problems, and for making immediate repairs to pressing issues, uh, such as such and such not working, etc. Um, playing an engineer, especially a chief engineer, it's really important to have a fairly good knowledge of Star Trek and its technology. Now, you don't need to necessarily use the techno-babble um, of Star Trek, but I if you have a basic knowledge of how things work, it will serve you very well. Um, and being an engineer, especially the chief engineer, um, it may be difficult for you to really find that balance, but you know, through experience, you will find it. Um, as the chief engineer, your posts will basically be here in main engineering, but you also do have duties on the bridge, especially when there isn't an ops officer present. As a rule of thumb, I always suggest to chief engineers that you spend most of your time in engineering, and um, only be on the bridge if there is um, there's not much going on in engineering. There's maybe a, a plot thing that may need you on the bridge. Um, but never be on the bridge during red alert unless it's a very special circumstance. Ultimately, if you have an ops officer in a role play, you really shouldn't be on the bridge at all and leave that to ops, which is really engineering on the bridge. Um, let's talk about a few things that um, an engineer might do. Um, first of all, if you're in engineering and you hear red alert, no matter if you're not really in the focus of the plot, you just need to spring into action. Um, let's say red alert has been called. Beep, beep, beep. You've closed the blast doors. Ensign, initiate level three diagnostics on all subsystems. Aye, sir. Blast doors sealed, sir. Activate warp core containment field. Warp core containment field activated. Aye, sir. That was an accident. Uh, me falling. Um. Again, what I just did was something that you would say via chat that would make things a little exciting for a few moments. It's obviously longer in a roleplay than it is over voice. Um, during Red Alert in Star Trek, we've seen through canon that, you know, blast doors are sealed, the warp core containment field is raised, and level 3 diagnostics are run. 
This kind of gives a sense of urgency, especially to your subordinates, if you have subordinates in a plot. Um, and during a red alert, you don't want to just be standing around, you really want to be moving around, looking at systems, hitting consoles, um, examining things, and uh, being ready with your toolkit if your ship is taking damage, to really spring into action to uh, uh, make sure the ship is as patched up as it can be, uh, given the circumstances. Um, in terms of the less exciting moments of being a chief engineer, um, you'll have to find things to fill your time. In this respect, I recommend sticking towards system maintenance, such as diagnostics or recalibrations. Recalibrations especially. Um, look here, you see some, maybe some ODN grids. Why don't you just scan them? You know, look and see what's wrong. Have your character diagnose the problems and see that everything's in line. Make a few notes on your pad and add it to your report. Then grab out your toolkit, take out your hyper spanner, and get to work on realigning those conduits. And there you go. Scan. Obviously, this would go on for a bit longer than what I'm doing, but for the sake of time, blah blah blah. And there you go. You've done a maintenance function. Make a note in your log. Maybe mention it to the chief. Um, other things you might do. Maybe you'll just. Maybe you'll go into maybe an EPS grid, maybe down here, and take a look at what's wrong, scan it, take notes, just like we did before. And this looks really mundane and boring, but with the addition of your own text, saying, hmm, I wonder if the problem could be this, scan, blah 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 blah, it's nothing plot essential, but it really gets you and your character really involved in the mission, albeit secondarily, and it will really give you something to do as well. And obviously there are the little things, like repairing system X, system Y, blah blah blah. In situations where there is large damage, a large amount of damage to the ship, um, the chief engineer really needs to delegate repairs. Um, starships really operate on a repair team um, schedule. Um, Usually during a red alert, everyone's at their post, so you have like a repair team alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Um, look at the situation that's called for the, by the plot. If you just had combat and you think there's going to be more, repair team alpha, focus on shields, beta on weapons, gamma on hull integrity, um, delta, you're on cleanup duty. By cleanup duty, I mean like these little system repairs. Or maybe delta, you're on um, stabilizing the warp core systems, etc. Um, just this really gets your engineering staff involved and make you, makes you seem like you know what you're doing and really adds to the plot. Um, and it, it, it's very much um, in canon. Um, that's basically really the essentials of the CE. The CE uh, role is very variable um, and it can be used in a lot of ways to really enhance the plot. So um, if you know what you're doing, um, it can really add a new dimension to the plot. Let's move on to the security department. We're already in our gold uniform, so no need to worry about that. But let's change the security class. Let's change our name to COS, or Chief of Security. And let's change our rank to somewhere between Ensign, or well, Lieutenant Junior Grade and Lieutenant. We'll say Lieutenant. And we're all set up. Now, here's an important thing for us to do. Let's put on our belt. Now, for those of you who don't know how to equip a belt, go into your menu, go to Configure, Commands, Control Commands, and then right here it says Equip Belt and bind it to a key I find B to be the best. Now, what does that do, you may ask? Well, it equips... Well, let me... Well, I can't go into admin class or you'll see the password. Uh, this equips a little belt right here that you can kind of see. Yes, right there. Um, and that, that basically equips your phaser and tricorder um, visibly, but you don't actually have it out. This is a good way as a security officer to kind of show that you're in a higher alert situation or being a security officer on the bridge, you usually will have your phaser anyway, without actually holding your phaser out. Obviously during RPs, we don't usually like you running around randomly with your phaser out for no apparent reason, because that can lead to noobing of this nature. 
having it on your belt is a good uh, good way to show um, that you're genuinely a genuinely a security officer, maybe on patrol even and guarding, but at the same time not noobing um, and not having your rifle out. So definitely a must for security officers. Let's head to the bridge and look at the tactical console. Here's the tactical console. As you can see, there are all different types of alerts. Green alert, which is standard operating mode. Yellow alert, which is used in cases where a threat is anticipated, uh, but not imminent, or when the CO uh, just wants everyone to be cautious. Um, during yellow alert, all hands are called duty stations. What that means is that all hands that are on duty um, during that shift need to actually report to their stations if they're on break or on special assignment. This is red alert. This signals battle stations. All personnel, regardless of shift, are ordered to report to their special battle stations. A attack is either happening or imminent, or there's a special sort of situation that is very dangerous to the ship. Blue alert is a very special alert. It's used in a variety of different ways. The ways I've seen it used are um, exiting Stardock, um, reduced power mode, especially gray mode, um, multi-vector assault mode, um, also occasionally used for intruder alerts and um, for situations where life support is failing. Um, also for planetary landings. Um, weapons. This is an important thing. Um, your main goal really is COS in, in plots. Um, you may be called upon a lot to fire the weapons of the ship. A lot of times people don't do this right. Let's do a little mock battle. Okay, there is a Romulan warbird against this Prometheus class ship. Obviously the Prometheus class ship is much more superior and will win the engagement more likely than not, barring external circumstances. Let's not have a battle of... Pew pew pew. Sir, the Romulan ship has been destroyed! Well, that was anticlimactic. Let's also not have a firefight that lasts for 10 minutes and your ship is disabled, or... Oh no, sir! We just fired one shot and our shields were already down. Let's find a happy medium. Um, if those of you who have played Star Trek Bridge Commander, that's really a good model and what I use when I'm a, a chief of security to really determine a good length um, for a combat to last. Uh, usually, depending on the engagement, maybe one to two minutes. I think that's an acceptable level. And um, let us know, like, oh, a shield's at 75%, or, you know, their hull integrity is at 50%, uh, sir, you know, their weapons are offline, sir, our weapons are offline, etc. Uh, make sure to be very realistic about the damage you take. Again, you don't want to, um, you don't want to have your ship disabled at the first shot, and you don't want to destroy the other ship at the first plot. Um, and let's just be realistic and remember our knowledge about Star Trek. Um, nextly, um, don't have your weapon drawn unless it called for by the situation. Like, don't always just randomly have your rifle out and firing it, obviously. Again, just use the belt, like we talked about. Um, never fire at a person. Uh, remember, no fracking on the Sirius server. We've covered this ad infinitum already, so I won't mention it again. But, uh, just don't do it. Um, always be at your post during red alert. She should really be here at yellow alert, too. Um, but don't abandon it. Um, it's very important that you be here. If you're not on the bridge and there's a combat situation, um, unless your character is just literally unable in character to be on the bridge, um, that obviously is not good, because then someone else has to take the weapon station, and that just kind of disrupts the flow of the plot, and just doesn't make sense in character. Um, if you're playing a junior security officer, um, then you should need, you should head to the armory and grab a weapon and start patrolling the ship. Again, you don't need to have your rifle out necessarily, uh, unless the situation really calls for it, but you can still just equip uh, your weapon. Uh, and also, if the chief of security is otherwise engaged or incapacitated, you need to man the bridge tactical console in his absence. And the tactical console should be manned as much as possible. So. Junior security officers, if the COS is away, one of you come up and take the station, it's important. Um, also, don't randomly fire in the RP just because you're bored. Even if you go to the holodeck and do quote-unquote weapons training, we will hear you firing your weapon and it will be very distracting to us. So please don't do that unless it is a very major part of the RP and the CO has basically said, yeah, it's fine. Um, well, that basically covers it for the general rules. Let me just give a couple more tips for the um, for the junior security officer. 
Uh, being a junior security officer can be a bit boring sometimes, um, frankly, and you kind of need to make your own work uh, when you're not at the center of the plot. And when you're not at the center of the plot, you know, you can spend some time in the armory, maybe recalibrating weapons or taking inventory, or you could just do a general patrol of the ship, just walking around and seeing if anything's out of the ordinary and investigating anything that may be a little out of the ordinary, keeping in mind superhero syndrome, you don't want to uncover the the uh, conflict of the plot, which hasn't happened yet, and single-handedly preventing it. Maybe going to the cargo bay, making sure that everything's in order. If you have a prisoner in the brig, you'll want to spend some time there. Maybe you'll want to go by engineering, make sure everything's okay. Um, just use some common sense, and... Um, and make sure that the ship is secure in uh, whatever way you can. And that about covers it for the basics of the security and engineering departments. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, you'll be linked now to the final video um, with the blue shirt departments. So this is it for the gold shirt departments. This is Jensen signing out.